All right, so today we are going to do the inverse trig integrals. So brief pep talk about these. Um, there's three of them that we need to know. They are highly unlikely to come up. I've seen them come up, but it's like few and far between um, on the AP exam. But this is one of those things where it's like, if I don't cover it, they're definitely going to put one on there sort of thing. So, um, and I, I'm going to cover everything. Everything that is, is part of the objectives, I'm going to cover. So I guess my point is, don't overly stress about these. Um, it's not going to be like heavy on the AP exam. Um, but it could show up on there, so we do want to cover it. I'm going to write out the three formulas that you're going to need to know. Write them down. I'm going to just write them and give you a minute to write them down, and then I'll go over them. You actually end up needing to memorize very, very little on these. I don't even make flashcards for these ones, and you'll see why once we work out a few problems, because it ends up just like showing up in the problem anyway. But my pep talk for you is they're going to look scary when I write them out. So just don't be alarmed. Um, just go ahead and write them down. And then once we do a few problems, it won't be so bad, I, I promise. Okay. All right, so the thing with these is you really don't need to memorize the left side of the equal sign. Like this part, you really don't need to memorize because that's just going to happen in the problem. You really just need to be able to identify which one is which. These, again, you won't need to worry about this. That's gonna be almost like given to you in the problem. Oh, those are all squared. This is A squared minus U squared a squared plus u squared, and then this one is u squared minus a squared. Nothing's to like a, a z power. Um, also, I draw my twos like this and my z's like that on purpose so that you can tell the difference. So a z would have like a slash through it. Those are all twos. All right, so you don't need to worry about the left side of the equal sign because that's just going to be in the problem. Like this is just gonna happen. And then all of these, if you look at them, they're all really the same. It's arc sine u over a plus c, arc tangent u over a plus c, and arc secant u over a plus c. Like they're all the same. Um, very subtle differences. The arc sine does not have that one over a out front, and the arc secant has an absolute value. Now, if you forgot the absolute value, I would not mark off for that, for heaven's sake. So uh, this is really the only part you need to know. And, and they're all the same. So it's really not that bad. You just need to be able to identify which one of these is which. So real quick, and you can just type sine, tangent, or secant in the chat. You don't even need to type the R card. I just wanna ask you, how can you tell which one, uh, or actually, I guess I'm gonna ask the question, I'm gonna word it a little differently. How can you tell which one is arc tangent? Like what is different about this one versus the other two? Like how can you just identify, oh yeah, this one's gonna be arc tangent. 
Like, why is this one not like the other two is what I'm good. No square root. So perfect. The one that doesn't have the square root is arc tangent. And I wrote this a squared plus u squared, but it could also be u squared plus a squared. The order you add doesn't matter. So if it's written in the other order, it still is, is arc tangent. All right. So that one's arc tangent. And then out of the other two that both have a square root, how can you tell the one that's secant? Like what's different? about this one? Like, how could you identify that one? There's a U in front. Yeah, multiplication. There's like a little extra doodad there. That's really all you have to be able to do. The one with no square root, that's arc tangent. The one that's got an extra little doodad out front, that's arc secant. And again, they're all arc whatever U over A plus C, right? So let's do a problem. Because uh, I know when I write that out, that just like inspires terror in everybody. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, guys, it's actually not that horrible. So go ahead and write that one down. And then I just want you to think, is this one gonna be arc, sine, tangent, or secant? Like we should just be able to glance at it and know like there is a root, but there's not like a little extra coefficient out front. So good, it's gonna be arc sine. Like right off the bat, if you can even just identify that, and if it's a multiple choice question, you can narrow down your choices like without even doing any work. Like if you're just like, oh, that's gonna be arc sine, then, then you're halfway there, to be honest, all right? So A is always gonna be a value and U is always gonna be a variable, all right? So when we look at what's in here, A is gonna be eight. And the reason it's eight is eight squared gives you 64. I'm gonna use perfect squares for the most part. Um, because they're just easier to deal with. You're, you're square rooting it because see how the formula has a squared in there? So eight squared is 64. And then u is gonna be three x. Um, if you square three x, you get nine x squared. All right, and then you're doing the same thing that you've always done in a u substitution. We have, there's just also an a. A is gonna be a value. That should just be a number. U is gonna have a variable in it. So then you have to do the derivative. Derivative of three x is, 3dx, and so we're going to adjust with a one third. And you can highlight if you want to here. I guess I'll do that just to be thorough. There's really not much to highlight in these ones. So in place of the dx, we're going to put one third du. And they always put the du in the numerator for these. Um, sure why they do that. You can put a one in the numerator and put the du outside at the end if that makes you happier. And then when you go to substitute, you have square root of, and then this is a squared minus u squared. So like I said, this part, you don't need to memorize because it's just going to show up. And I actually have a lot of people that end up skipping writing this step. They'll just skip this step entirely. Um, because they'll just go, oh, it's arc sine and there's gonna be a one third in front of it. And they'll just like skip that and jump straight to the answer. Um, so this is gonna be a one third arc sine and then it's U over A, so three X over eight plus C. And again, I'm actually fine with that. If you wanna skip this step and literally just write out the answer, that's okay with me. Because really, you're just identifying. Is it arc sine? Is it arc tangent? Or is it arc secant? Right, so let's try another one. All right, so before I even start writing anything down, is it gonna be arc sine, tangent, or secant? Just by looking at what's there, we have a root and we have this little extra thing out front. Good, arc secant. So you already know which one it's gonna be. And if you like totally lost your marbles, like if you write something with an arc secant in, 
you made a good guess. You know? All right, so A is always gonna be a value. U is always gonna be a variable. So since I have this nine here, A is gonna be three and U is gonna be four X. Um, if you square four X, you're gonna get 16 X squared, or you could just realize this part is gonna be U. So that derivative is four DX. And I need to change that four into a five. I have a five in the problem. So I'm gonna multiply this by five fourths. That will change that into a five DX. Then again, you can highlight if you want. Again, there's not very much to highlight in these ones. So five fourths goes out front. And um, du is in the numerator. And then this is u square root u squared minus a squared. So again, that is, if you look back up, I'm not going to move the paper down again because I don't want to keep making me seasick moving it around. But that's exactly what it says up there for arc secant. So again, if you want to skip this step, just realize you're going to have a five fourths out front. Um, I'm I'm cool with that because you're basically just writing out the answer. So we're going to have that five fourths out front. Now arc secant and arc tangent had that one over a that was out front. So one over a a is three. So it's going to be a one third arc secant, and then it's u over a plus c. So u over a plus c, and arc secant has that absolute value in. Again, I don't want you to stress about that. If you forgot that, I wouldn't mark it wrong. And you can just leave it like that. Now, if you really want to multiply these fractions together, it would be 5 twelfths. Um, so you would, could have a 5 twelfths out front, but I'm fine with you leaving it like that too. It's simplified enough for me. So I put boundaries on this one so we can practice our unit circle. And this one's gonna be an arc tangent because I do not have a square root in this one. So we're gonna decide what A and U are. A is going to be a value. So since I have this four here, A is going to be two. Two squared gives you four. U is actually just going to be X. And so DU is just DX. So that's the only thing that we're going to highlight here. Now, I'm not going to adjust these boundaries for this these arc ones. I'm going to leave them 0 to 2 and just wait until the end. So I'm going to hold off on those for just a second. Um, this is going to be du over a squared plus u squared. And, and once again, if you didn't even want to write that step, you can just jump straight to the answer. Because um, if you already know it's going to be arc tangents, it's really not necessary to write that. So it's going to have a 1 over a out front. So that's 1 half arc tangent u over a plus c, or no, this one's not going to have a plus c. I'm sorry, this one has the boundaries, not a plus c, um, just u over a. So x over 2, and then we'll have such that 0 to 2. So we're going to do upper boundary minus lower boundary. So if we plug in 2, our upper boundary, 2 over 2 is 1. So we're going to have 1 half arc tangent of 1 minus, and then your lower boundary, if you plug in zero, that's just going to be zero. So one half arc tangent of zero. So when you're doing arc tangent, you're doing this backwards. It's like you have the sides of the triangle and you want the angle. So your answer should have a, a pi in it. You're looking for something like pi over two, pi over four, pi over three, uh, zero pi. You know, that's, that's what you're looking for. So when it's arc tangent of one, this is the triangle on your unit circle that you're looking at. Because tangent is opposite over adjacent or y over x or sine over cosine, however your brain wants to think of that. But anything over itself is how you end up with one. So hey guys, what is this angle? That's what we're trying to find. What is this amount of rotation 
for the square root of two over two triangle, because that's what that result is going to be. <coughs> well, 45 is in degrees, and we just don't, that's the right answer, but we just don't do degrees in calculus. You're not wrong, but um, but yeah, there, it, it's going to be pi over four. There we go. 45 is what that is in degrees, but we would just have pi over four. All right, so this is one half times pi over four minus, all right, and then we're going to do zero, which is going to be right here on your unit circle. Tangent is y over x. So if you had zero over one, that's how you're going to end up with zero. So this amount of rotation is zero pi. You've gone nowhere. And so this part's just going to be zero. Zero times anything is zero. That's just gone. Um, and if you multiply these together, you're going to have pi over eight as your final answer. Now, if you're doing a free response question, you can stop here. You don't have to evaluate. But if it's multiple choice, you're going to have to keep going, which is why I want to go over this um, and make sure that I've covered all of it. Or right, just do one more here. All right, so this one is pretty tricky. We're gonna have to split it into two separate problems because these inverse trig patterns only work if you don't have something in the numerator. Like you can't have a variable up there. Like if it's a coefficient, you can always adjust for that. Like I did one that had a five and we were able to adjust for it. But if you have a variable up there in the numerator, like an X or something, that's gonna be an issue and you're not gonna be able to use one of these patterns. So what we're going to do is split this into two separate problems. For one, we're going to do just the x over all of this. And then for the other one, we're going to have minus. For the other one, we're going to have just the 5 over all of this. So I separated it um, into two different problems. So basically, this is like a part A and a part B, and we're going to just do them separately. And so what's going to happen is this one is going to be a basic U substitution, just like we did last class. OK, and then this one is going to be arc tangent because we don't have a square root there. So this one, basic U substitution, you would let U equal the denominator. And then that derivative is 2x dx. And we're going to adjust it with a one half. So we're going to put one half out front and then du at the end. What's still there is this stuff in the denominator. So it is one over u. And so it's going to be ln. I didn't put plus C because I'm going to wait until I do the whole thing and I'll just put a plus C at the end of all of it. Um, and then I just have to put this stuff back in for you, that X squared plus one. So one half LN X squared plus one. So that's the first problem. This one. I stopped talking for a second until that internet connection is unstable message went away. I'm still connected on my phone. I don't understand why it's doing that. Um, if that happens again, I'm just gonna stop talking until it goes away. I'm really sorry, guys. I don't know how else to connect. My internet's just being annoying again. All right, so we're gonna have minus, and then, oh, I guess I don't need to write that here. Let me write out what A and U are gonna be. So A is gonna be a value and u is going to be a variable. So since I have a 1 here, uh, a is going to be 1. 1 squared is 1. And u is just going to be x, um, x squared. And so the derivative of that 
is just dx. Um, and I guess you could adjust this if you want. I think what I'm gonna do is just bring the five out front. You could multiply this by a five if you like, um, but at the end of the day, there's just gonna be a five out front in the problem. So I think I'm just gonna move five outside of the integral range. All right, so this is gonna be minus, I'm gonna kind of string this all together here. Minus, I'm gonna put that five out front and this would be du over u squared plus a squared. Again, it doesn't matter what order you write those in because you're adding them. So the, the order you write that doesn't make a difference. All right, so this will be minus, um, and we're gonna have this five out front and then one over a. Now here's this thing though, a is one. So you'd have one over one, um, which is just gonna be one. So it's not gonna change anything. So just five arc tangent of u over a. So that would be x over one, um, which is just gonna be x and then plus c. So actually that didn't line up. Let me just have to copy that over again. And then this is your answer to the whole thing. So this is what we got from the first part. And then this is what we got from the second part. And then I just put plus C at the end of the whole thing because we're just stringing it all together there.